you know what? I'm sure this will be fine. This is like 2024 is the year that I'm filming with my back camera because I have a bad habit of filming with my front camera so that I can see that I'm in focus and I can just see that I'm not like, you know, chopping the top of my head off. The books are in like camera view. It's just so much easier, even if I do have a habit of just staring at myself while I'm talking. So this way I'm going to talk to the camera. But I'm like, you know what? 2024 is the year we're gonna properly we're gonna address the camera and I'm gonna use my back camera because I feel like your back camera is better on your phone than your front camera. I feel like that's a thing. I don't think this will be very long. This is really just an intro. Okay, so I semi touched upon this in my last video, which was basically all the books I want to read in 2024. In case you didn't watch that video, this year I have decided there's a few books that I own that are very very popular very very popular in like book talk book tube book twitter is it technically book x now i will never call x twitter uh, i will never call twitter x i will never call x x x will always be twitter i hate when people say like on the app formerly known as twitter i'm like you can't just say twitter elon musk might get mad but what does it matter it's always going to be twitter to me but i've seen these books over the years, they're very popular. I believe they're both being turned into TV shows. I think one of them definitely is. And I saw so many people singing their praises and I had to be honest, I was like, I did not enjoy these books when I read them the first time. So I have not picked up the sequels. But this year, I decided that since everybody is saying how great they are, I want to read them again to see if it will change my opinion. Now, I know not everybody is gonna love every book ever. And just because a million people love one book doesn't mean that there's not a handful of people out there who just don't like it because sometimes I feel like we all have different personalities the same way we all don't like the same people we don't all have the same friends sometimes it's personality for me with like main characters or a significantly important character and especially if it's the main character that I don't gel with it ruins a book for me or if uh, I know for a while I went through I think I was just in a really moody hateful bitch era and I I hated any kind of romance in all books. I just, I hated it. I hated, if I was reading a mystery and all of a sudden this side character was coming along and they started having a little bit of a, a little bit of a romance going on. I was like, no, focus on the mystery. This is what I'm here for. Or if I was reading like fantasy or just, just anything, anything at all. I got so standoffish about any kind of romance in my books that I'm like, Girl, I think you just need to get laid, honest to God. But now I'm feeling a little bit more, I feel like I'm growing, I'm maturing, I'm becoming more of a romance lover. I don't think I will ever be the kind of person that will pick up romance books specifically. I have very few. Most of my books, I feel like, always have a sort of underlying story that's not, like, the romance isn't necessarily the main premise, but, like, romance comes into it or romance plays a heavy part. But I've never specifically picked up a book that is catered for romance and is all about a character's love story with another character. I'm just hateful. I think I just hate love. But now I've decided I'm gonna love love because love is great. And I've read recently, there was a couple of books that I read where romance snuck into it and I didn't immediately hate it. I think there were more slow burns, a little bit of enemies to lovers. I wouldn't even call it enemies. It's more like just two people who are a little bit, a little bit mean to each other. Like I feel like for something to be enemies to lovers, they need to be proper cutthroat enemies. Like I want you to have tried to kill me at least twice. <laughs> I think I'm just too, I'm too diehard about this kind of things. I'm rambling. Anyway, I kind of feel like I have changed over the years as a reader and I'm a bit more accepting. That is a lie. I have become more brutal over the years, but I'm more of a critic, I would say now. I get quite critical over, say, like writing styles or how characters are written, if they're not written very well, if they're very one dimensional or a bit cartoony. I feel like the more I'm reading, the more critical I'm becoming, but I'm also a lot more accepting of certain tropes. I'm reading a book at the moment called The the Betrayals, or The Betrayal? The Betrayals by Bridget Collins, who wrote one of my favorite books 
called The Binding and I did a review on that years ago and I only rated it four stars because a couple of things irked me about it so I took it down from five stars to four stars but looking back I should have just gave it five stars because actually I really enjoyed the book. Anyway and um, there's like a little bit of it's sort of academical there's a little bit of rivalry going on. I will be perfectly honest I have absolutely no clue what this book is about. It is it's based on another novel I read because I happened to just glance at the back because I want to see how many pages it was and I read the author's like acknowledgement page and she was inspired a lot by another book and it's all about it's called I can't I think I'm so uneducated I think there's a lot of French words in it I can't pronounce the name of the school I called it in my last in another video I did where I was like Montverry, Montverry, and I think it's like Montverre, but I'm not good at French. And then the the game that they're playing is called the Grand Jeu, Jeu, must be Grand Jeu. That's how I'm reading it. And it's all to do with creating games based around like music and maths. And I'm like, this is all going straight over my head. I thought it was a book about like magical kids. There's no magic to this. I'm so confused. But two of the characters are a bit mean to each other and I realise they want to bang. So I'm enjoying that very much. <laughs> but I'm still so confused by it. I'm rambling again. What I'm trying to say is I used to be so hateful about romance or sexual tension. It instantly would make me hate a book. And then I think it would change my opinion on it and I would get just salty. And yeah. But I'm getting better. I am improving. I can feel myself improving with these things. Like I'm less of a hateful bitch and if you have a romance in your story I am less likely to suddenly turn on it. Having said that, oh my god I'm rambling so much, I said this would be a short intro. Having said all that, so the two books that I read years ago, like this has got to be a good couple of years ago, I don't even remember buying these books, I don't even think I have a review or like left a rating on Goodreads because it was before I was in a Goodreads. But the two books that I read years ago did not like them and then saw them everywhere in the book community and people were loving them and reading the other books. And I was like, oh God, am I just a hater? Are A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson and Caraval by Stephanie Garber. Two very different books. <laughs> I will be perfectly honest. I don't remember a thing about this book. I really... I remember like the main character is trying to solve the mystery of like a schoolgirl was murdered, her boyfriend was blamed. I think that he commits suicide or they thought it was suicide. She doesn't think that that was the case, that it was as cut and dry. And so she goes about trying to solve it as like a class project something like that my main issue i had with this book i think i did enjoy the mystery i will be honest i don't even remember who the killer was i have an idea i remember there was somebody who was like kind of creating trouble for the main character peppa but i don't remember if they were the killer or not i don't think so i don't remember because it wasn't was i don't remember and i don't want to say on here in case you haven't read it but i remember my main issue that i had with this book was the main character and the way she spoke it made me cringe so much. She came out with these really quirky one-liners and things that just made me, my toes curled and I would internally cringe and I would scream at her. And I'm like, people don't talk like this. I hated the dialogue. I hated the way that every character spoke to each other. I hated it. It's all coming back. It's all coming back, coming back to me now. I just struggled. The dialogue was the biggest thing for me. I really, really struggled with it. And it just made me cringe. But you know what? We're going to give another go. <laughs> We're going to give another go. And I think there's two other books. There's a good, this, this is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. There's Good Girl, Bad Blood. And there's another one. But I'm going to give it another go. And you know what? It, maybe I'll improve my thoughts on it. Maybe I want to watch the TV show because I'm sure they're turning this into a TV show. I just, that's all it was for me. I hated the dialogue and I struggled to get through this because I was like, I was cringing so hard. I hated it. But like I say, 2024 is going to be the year I'm not going to be such a hateful bitch. So maybe, maybe my opinion might change. Who knows? The other book is Caraval, which... I will be honest, once again, I don't really remember much of. I know that there was the whole, like, there was the game 
and there was two sisters and they were escaping their abusive father there was a guy that sort of i'll call him a pirate i don't know if it was explicit to say he was a pirate but he had a boat and he took them to where the games was she got separated from her sister and she basically spent the entire games trying to find her sister I remember a few little things from it. My memory of this book and the reason I didn't like it as much is because there was the slightest little bit of, not really romance, but I think there was definitely some sort of tension going on between the main character and the pirate man, who may or may not be a pirate. And it irked me. That's, But I may even be wrong with that. That's just the way it's ingrained in my head that I didn't like the two characters because there was the slightest bit of romance. But I may have completely made that up. I might be surprised if I read this book and it turns out that in fact, no, the pirate man, maybe not a pirate, was not actually a love interest at all. And I've just completely fabricated that element of it. I just remember there was something about it that I just didn't enjoy that much. And I remember the ending got me when in the end she was reunited with her sister and it turned out she'd been shagging the guy who runs the games. Spoiler. <laughs> And I found him a bit creepy. Like, I think, I think I found him a bit creepy. And in stories like that, where there's like, once a year, the infamous master legend hosts Caravelle. Only to those who have been invited this year, the, the week-long game is on Legends Glittering Isle. That is Spanish. Where the winding streets are an elaborate, an elaborate snow-covered maze and the people are never who they seem. At midnight on the first day, the show begins and visitors become players. Each of them is vying for the coveted prize, a single wish. All they must do is unravel the mystery of caramel, but a game where danger hides behind every charming smile. Winning isn't without loss and their wish might be their last. So I think in these kind of books, when there's like a like an infamous master legend who hosts the games, I always want them to be some really whimsical, magical person a bit like Gandalf-ish or like Aslan from the Chronicles of Narnia. That kind of mystical being that's a bit sort of like all-knowing, all-powerful, knows what they're doing, offers advice. I don't, I don't know where I'm going with this. And I think when we met him, I found him to be a bit of a kid. I think he gave me the egg. <laughs> I think he just sort of, I was reading the ending and I was like, oh, I did, I think I didn't like him, which changed my opinion on like the whole book. I don't even remember if I enjoyed the book while I was reading it. I just, I just remember the ending when she met up with her sister again and she'd been shagging the master legend. That was a bit like, I thought I would never... <laughs> I just I didn't like it for some reason I didn't I just remember not really vibing with it and for whatever reason I just got um, I yeah I don't even know what I rated this book this was probably at a time before I was even rating books I read this so long ago I feel like I just feel like I can remember when I bought it and it just feels like a lifetime ago definitely not in like my goodreads or anything like that where I was giving reviews and stuff and leaving ratings but hey ho but you never know, I'm gonna reread it, and if I like it, I'm gonna buy the other two in the series. Which are currently retailing for $9.99 each on Amazon.co.uk. Which is giving me the other ick because I don't like <laughs> I don't like paying full price for books. I also am a little bit nervous about buying them online because they won't show me they only show me the front covers. And I need to make sure I get one with the same cute little edges as this one so that they all like sit together and they look adorable. Because I love these edges. I love them. But you know what? I'm going to give it another go. I'm going to give them both another go. I'm currently reading, like I said, The Betrayals by Bridget Collins. Um, it is a hardback. It is quite hefty. I'm a quarter of the way through it. So I think that'll be me for January. Like that's just, yeah, I'm a procrastinator. But that's all I'm probably going to read in January. So I will pick these up in February, I hope and pray. And, you know, we shall see if my opinion changes. So they both have two more books in their series, as far as I'm aware. So, uh, you know, that could be four more books I could end up getting if I like them. I will be honest, I think Caraval's the one I'm the most optimistic that I will change my mind on. I feel like I might be a bit more open to it. I already know the ending, so it's not going to 
startle me as much or anything but I feel like the run up to the ending there's things that I've forgotten maybe they'll come back to me as I'm reading it but I feel like if I'm gonna change my opinion on any of them it's gonna be this one and I think I might enjoy it and then want to read the rest and maybe I might fall in love with the pirate man who knows was he a pirate I honestly can't remember I'm just assuming he was because he had a boat if you have a boat in a fantasy-esque novel you're a pirate but this one I think I'm optimistic by this one however I am not because dialogue is a big thing to me and if I take a dislike to a main character because of how they act and how they speak that's that's game over that's there's no coming back because I can't gel with you you're not my person so for that reason I'm not very optimistic about a good girl's guide to murder I might have grown a little bit mature you know I might have developed a bit more patience I might not even find her as cringy anymore we shall see. Maybe this book might shock me again because I might have completely forgot. I have a feeling I think I know. There was definitely one person who was creating trouble for her, like threatening her and stuff. And they killed her dog. Accidentally. But I can't remember if that was the real killer or if they were just covering up for the real killer or if they were just trying to cover up their own tracks if they did something. I really don't remember. And I think I have a, I have a slight suspicion of who I think the killer is. But it could still shock me because I've forgotten this could be the one that my opinion just won't change on so my plan is to read these hopefully in february and i think i might record my progress because why not <laughs> and we can see me either slowly spiral into insanity as i remember how much i hated these books or i might become a lover not a hater and i might absolutely love them and decide that oh my god this is great and then I'll end up having to spend more money to buy the rest of the books in the series. Which sounds like a win-win all. <laughs> so, yeah. Come with me if you want to live and experience the art of revisiting stories that I once hated. And who knows? Maybe they might become my new favourites. Not this one. No, never this one. But this one, maybe. I'm going to go insane. I finished reading The Betrayals last night by Bridget Collins, so it's time to start my reread of Caraval. I think I'm going to go with it first just because I feel like it's the one I'm quite hopeful that I'm actually going to change my mind on and I might actually enjoy. It might even be a five star read. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna have a little bash, I'm gonna sit down and do some reading and see how that goes. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I think I'm gonna enjoy it this time. I'm feeling optimistic, but I will check in with you later and we shall see. Okay, so I'm currently on the 162 page mark. I read like half a book in an afternoon. I started this at like two. I'm flying through this. I am so surprised at how quick I'm flying through it and I do recognize a lot of it. <clears throat> but there are also little things that I'm like, I don't really remember all that well. But so far it's so good. I am actually enjoying it. I'm noticing the difference from the first time I read it where ugh, I must have read it must have been like five or six years ago I feel like I got the book not long after it came out so five maybe six years ago and I remember like I just was not interested in the sort of the, the side character of Julian who's the sailor I kept calling him a pirate I really thought he was a pirate he was a sailor and he like was always flirting a little bit just being that kind of little coggy around the main character and she's like no stop i'm engaged to be married but you can tell she's like fighting feelings and i remember the whole time i read the book i was like i was cringing i was rolling my eyes i was like oh just just stick to the plot like i do not care for this stop it now stop it and i generally think it was just me being like a cold-hearted bitch because i'm reading it this time and i'm like Ooh! Like, I'm getting, I'm getting butterflies. I think I've mellowed out. I think as I've gotten older and 
you know, since I read this book the first time, like I've been in proper relationships. I'm a little bit more cuddly. I used to be very sort of like closed off and not very, not very emotional. Is that the, not very loving is sort of the term um, when it came to like romance and stuff. But now that, you know, like I've, I've been loved and I've, ha and I have loved, I think I'm a little bit more loving of love. So I think that I um, definitely think that I am um, like I'm enjoying it more that side of things I know I I remember the ending roughly that it was like because obviously the whole point of this game that she's playing our main character Scarlet um she's trying to find her sister and I think the first time I read this that aspect of it always stressed me out because she was always looking for her sister and always felt like she was just out of reach and she literally did not find her until the end of the book and I remember that stressed me out the first time I read it but this time it's not stressing me out as much because I know I know we don't see her till the end so I'm a bit more kind of jovial carefree about it but I definitely remember the ending and I remember there was something about like I this little things and I feel like it was all set up for Scarlet and I'm so sure that Julian was part of it so it makes the rest of it feel a bit disingenuous like he was playing a game the entire time I also sort of can't overlook the fact that even though they were both trying to use each other, like Donatella, Scarlet's sister, was like trying to get it on with Julian at the very start of the book. And she was just using him to get like safe passage on his ship and he was apparently just using her as well. But it gives me the ick a little bit when he's like flirting with Scarlet and she's obviously sort of like fighting some sort of like desires for him. But it gives me a little, a little just a little bit of the ick just because of the fact that I'm like, girl, he was trying to get on with your sister. <laughs> like they didn't do anything, but still. I worry about how I'm gonna react when the ending comes up because I worry that that won't change my opinion. But we shall see. I'm going in with an open mind, but I'm already doing a lot better because as I say, I'm enjoying Julian. <laughs> I really am. A changed reader and I think this is kind of nice I think I might make this a sort of series of rereading books that I have read before and maybe didn't like all that much and it was just because I was a bit of a cold-hearted bitch but yeah so I think I read I looked at the back and there's 400 pages exactly in this one and I'm on 162 so I reckon I can actually I can do this in the night I can do this I'm enjoying it I'm actually really enjoying it I hope that lives up and I stay loving it. So I read 400 pages in a day. I am pretty proud. I feel like I read the first like 250-ish before dinner. But then for some reason it took me all night to finish the last no i read the first 200 before dinner and then it took me like all night to finish the last 200 but i think it's because the first half of the book i remembered as i was reading things i was like i know where this is going i know where this is going there were certain things that i didn't remember i think i did prefer this book the second time round. I definitely got on a lot better with the love story that's in it. Like I remember the first time I read this definitely like rolling my eyes and cringing the whole time because I hate any type of like just romance, that bit of flirting going on between characters. I'm like stick to the plot. I want to hear the story. I want to play the game. I do not care about the romance subplot. But this time I was like I really have changed so I did actually enjoy that a lot more. I did remember the ending for the most part. I remembered her sister. I don't want to spoil it for you in case you haven't read it. So I don't know how to say this without like giving spoilers, but I did remember the ending for like the most part. I remembered her eventually finding her sister, which was sort of the whole point of the game. The game centered around her trying to find her sister. I remembered the run up to it, but then I sort of forgot about like some of the characters weren't who they said they were. Like I remembered that the character of Julian was very deceptive and I had a, and I think I remembered that he was, I'm not gonna spoil it, but someone not to trust in a way, in a sense. 
I must admit though like getting to the ending again and sort of remembering a lot of things and then also still being surprised because there were stuff I'd forgotten about like it had been a long time since I read this book. I still can see why I think at the time I was a bit disappointed by it probably because as I say I think at the time I just was not in a mood to read romance subplots so I didn't enjoy that whereas this time I've enjoyed that. The ending still I find was very not confusing confusing is not the word to use but there were a lot of things that then just sort of didn't make sense or like things we were told that i feel like didn't need to be in the book so for example there were a couple of characters who one minute we thought they were beefing with each other then it turned out apparently they were working together to avenge this girl who died and it just it didn't really i'm still a bit confused like reading it it reminds you of like a fan fiction that somebody's posting a chapter like say every week and one minute they're telling you one thing but then like midway through they've kind of derailed and like started doing some like started doing something else or kind of changed the plot in a way but it's like because they've already published or already posted what they'd already written like you sort of can't really take it back that's kind of how it felt because there was a couple of times where we were getting these like reveals of like no like i'm sorry i've been lying to you but the truth is actually this girl was my sister and she died playing the games and I'm trying to like avenge her death and it's like okay that valid absolutely valid but then in the end it turned out they were like basically all not everyone but there was like they were all actors they were all in on it and I'm like well what was what was the point in a way like what what was the point there like they could have just told another lie like that felt too much of a convincing lie i mean i suppose that's the whole point but then it sort of never really made sense and then this girl just killed herself for like nothing so that was the only thing that kind of let me down a little bit with the ending was that like throughout like the kind of from the halfway mark throughout the three quarter mark and then to the very end like we were getting reveals but then it got to the point where towards the end i was like okay so none of what we were told was actually real and everybody was just like all putting on a performance which i think is the whole that is the whole point of the games like nothing is real we were told all this from the start nothing is real blah 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 scarlet did act like everything was real but i just feel like that kind of i still feel like i have some unanswered questions because then i'm like well why were certain characters acting a certain way what was the point like wh what even happened to valentina like i don't i don't even know like she was sort of never mentioned again and then what was with the whole subplot of pretending that they were working together and then there was notes being like Valentina's gone missing meet me here and then like people are turning up dead and all that but then like nobody dies in this <laughs> in this game it was all a bit yeah the ending the ending I do remember I remember being a little bit underwhelmed by the ending underwhelmed and overwhelmed if that makes sense it makes sense underwhelmed because it wasn't what I was expecting and even though like the the Mr Legendary Master Legendary guy that like runs the games my memory of him was hazy and he wasn't the person I thought he was kind of because we're misled to believe it's him and I that's how I, I forgot that we sort of didn't really ever really meet him until the very very end and even then we didn't meet him properly but there was something about the ending still that I'm not sure how I feel. It was still, I mean, it was all very magical and it was all very much like happily ever after. But I just, I think I didn't like the whole plot with like her dad and the Count. It felt very rushed. He came across as a little bit of like a caricature villain at times. And I know he was supposed to just be an absolute arsehole, but it all just, it's all coming back to me now. It's all coming back, it's coming back to me now. It is all coming back. I do remember being, yeah, under underwhelmed and overwhelmed. Overwhelmed because we were getting so much information that didn't really tie in. Like, you know, if you're told something and then you're told something else, which sort of expands on that first bit of knowledge that you have. Everything we then learnt at the very end dismissed everything else we'd already learned. So I think that's where it overwhelmed me. And then it underwhelmed me because I was just a bit like, what? <laughs> so 
I never gave this book an official rating when I first read it all those years ago. I did check my Goodreads but I hadn't posted anything about it. I I can't decide. I think I want to give it five stars and I do now want to read the rest although I'm not quite sure how it's going to pan out. Like I don't know if the story is continuing on from the sisters perspectives or if it's going to go back in time. I know the next one's called Legendary and that's a bit funny because the man who runs Caraval is called Master Legend. Master Legendary? Master Legend. <laughs> so I wonder if it's about him. There's a reference to their mum. So there's little things that I'm like, hmm. I think I would like to get the other books. I definitely will get the next one. I won't just jump in and buy both, but I'll definitely get the next one and just see what happens there. But yeah, I kind of wish I knew what I thought of the book at the time, really, like in terms of rating. Because there is a part of me that wants to give it five stars. But then there's another part of me that also wants to give it four. But I think I'll give it five because I loved the writing. I I really enjoyed it. I made notes in my notes app of pages of like little bits that I wanted to highlight because I've never been the kind of person to ever write in my books. Like never, ever. I don't highlight in them. I don't do the little sticky tabs. I don't like write my own like notes at the side being like oh my god they kissed or something like that since I've read this book before I was thinking it's like I could highlight some of these like they were quite nice like it was quite a very nice magical book I think maybe I will give it five stars shocking I know considering I didn't really like it the first time but I it yeah it kind of did what I thought it would I had a feeling that I would still be funny about the ending because I had a memory of it and if I didn't like it before chances are I wasn't gonna like it again I knew the only thing I would warm up to would be the character of Julian which I did which although saying that still a little bit iffy at the ending because I'm like boy you were the boy's a liar <laughs> so but no I think five stars five stars feels fair because I enjoyed it. I enjoyed this reread and I enjoyed the magic of it. Like I've just finished reading a book called The Betrayals by Bridget Collins. I don't know if I've already said that in this video and I had the same sort of feeling with it where I loved the characters and I was enjoying the story and I went into it thinking that it had a magical element to it just from reading the summary and there, there ended up not being like it made a reference to arcane i think i'm gonna do a book review on it i might film that tomorrow but it made reference to the arcane and i was like oh this is a magic school like i'm not talking full on like wizards and witches at hogwarts but i thought there was some slight magic to it and there wasn't and the entire plot the the plot was a funny one because i feel like it had different branches and the one of the plots of like queer the book was based which was in this school where they played this game called I think it's pronounced the Grand Jew it, it a lot of the words were are French words I think I think that's where the author had got them from <laughs> so I was I was struggling in my mind I was like I don't even know how to pronounce some of these I was never good with French but they were playing this game and it just was not explained to us well at all and I went and read some reviews to make sure that it wasn't just me being insane because I thought maybe I've just missed the part where they told us how the game works but no they never ever it was never explained to us so it's one of those things that we can't really enjoy so every time like it would start talking about it or a player would start playing a grand jew I would be like is it over yet like I love the characters in the book though but basically what I'm trying to say is I love like the magical element of this book that there was magic in it that it wasn't all like just like trickery and stuff like there was real magic to it but it was that sort of subtle magic where it's not like it's not spells and great like magic fights where like fireballs are coming out of our hands it's like little subtle things so like our characters were in a dress that changes all the time like it just kind of molds to her and kind of depends on our mood and I kind of love that like little subtle things like that and just different things that were going on when she took a potion and it took all colour away from the world apart from like the only things that were still in colour were like clues for her things like that like little subtle magic that it's not like completely just full-on Harry Potter-esque type of magic 
which is kind of what I wanted from the portrayals, which is, I'm sad I never got that. But I think I gave that book five stars, or I gave it four. I already don't remember. But this is definitely getting five stars. So now that I've read this, it is time to move on and read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder again. Now that's the book that I am not very optimistic about because I sort of can't see my opinion changing, mainly because I remember I did not like the main character. I struggled with her so badly. I just didn't like the way she talked and I didn't like the dialogue in it. And dialogue is a big deal to me. Like I hate when conversations just sound a bit too made up. Like the only kind of conversations you will ever hear in like a really cheesy Hallmark movie or whatever. And it makes me cringe and I'm just like, no, people don't talk like this in real life. But we shall see how that goes but I'm a little bit worried about it. I don't think I'll have the same. I don't think it'll come out being a five star review. It might be four stars though. If I can get over the dialogue and just enjoy the mystery again, which I don't even really remember what happened. I think I do, but we'll see. So yeah, so onwards and upwards. I'm really pleased. I'm really pleased that I love this book actually. I'm really happy. That's just, ugh. I knew it. I knew it. I'm changing, I'm evolving. I don't hate it. Ooh. And she's like, holy pepperoni. Oh my God. And when she started describing to him what a, what a jiffy meant because she was nervous, I am convinced I know who the killer is. Pip has only said holy pepperoni three times. 